Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and today we're meeting the gigantic Black Lee. <laughs> if Animal Watch couldn't get any more exciting, we bring you our biggest and most powerful dog to date, the Kangal's larger cousin, his heavyweight relative, the Malak Lee. Famous for his ability of protecting his flock and taking down walls, even taller, heavier, more muscle, more aggression, and apparently more drive than a Kangal. This super flock guardian beast will make the others look tiny. Don't go away. The Axaray Malaklisi, also known as the Malakli Karabas, is a large breed of livestock guardian from the Axaray province of Turkey. Often just called Malakli, which means loose of lip in Turkish, and gets his name from his huge drooping lips. This dog looks similar to a Kangal, acts like a Kangal. There's just one added factor, he's gigantic. The Malakli is believed to have descended from a common ancestor he shares with the Kangal, but has selectively been bred for larger size and greater weight. Kangals are known for their speed and power, believe you me, I've experienced it, charging into the night as a pack, working together to drive wolves away from the sheep and often in catching and killing them. The heavier Malakli often works singularly and has been known to have guarded over 800 sheep on his own. If he turns up, he turns up last after the faster, smaller Kangals and his aggression and weight would easily finish a small Turkish lone wolf off as wolves in Turkey are far smaller than the huge timber wolves of the USA. The males of the breed can stand up to 78 centimeters, which is 31 inches at the withers. But there are undocumented giants existing in the world. The breed is known to only obey commands from their master and can be aggressive with other people. They are known for not tolerating other dogs of the same sex working with them. This is why they work differently from the Kangal when defending their flocks. So if they can be aggressive to people, what on earth is going to happen today when I meet my first Malakli in the flesh? Rare and new to the UK, as usually working outside on a Turkish farm, I am so lucky to have found two of the only Malakli to exist in the UK. The first, Thanos, an absolute muscular powerhouse, residing alongside owner Cameron Richardson, star of SAS Who Dares Wins in Liverpool. The second, Abu, a younger and much taller version, residing close to Newcastle alongside owner Dylan. I call Cameron up to let him know I'm on my way and I'm instructed not to come to the door. Cameron says that he will wait outside his house, let Thanos bark at me for at least 20 minutes, after which he might allow me to touch him. Is this going to be the first nasty dog I've met on Animal Watch? We will soon find out. The camera lady and I get out of the car and meet Thanos. We didn't film the first interaction as we needed the dog to learn to trust us. So we stood near to Cameron, ignoring the dog and allowing Thanos to sniff and get used to us. After which he realized that we were friends and we were able to get this footage. Hi Cameron. Hi, Hi. Annika. Hello Thanos. Nice to meet you. Oh, this is Thanos, he's gorgeous. Isn't beautiful, he? isn't he? Lovely, aren't you, mate? I'm surprised <laughs> that he's took them treats off you because he never normally does that. He must love them. Hey, Thanos, Thanos, give up. Paws and everything. He's your hey, best mate. What now. a beautiful dog you are, he, Thanos. He Thanos, normally. Can you come say hi. Normally never come does say that. Hi, come on. You know? <laughs> <laughs> what a good boy. Oh, you. Good boy. Earlier, I had witnessed Thanos in full guard mode outside his house in Liverpool. He was gigantic. Honestly, the largest and most jacked dog I've met to date on Animal Watch. He defended his garden and property from everyone who came past, and he looked quite terrifying. Cameron really needed to dig his feet into the ground to hold back this powerful and extremely good-looking dog, 
from all who dared get close. This dog was not mucking around, and it's good that he had such a responsible owner as Cameron, who knew just how to handle him. I was told that the way Thanos took to me was rare, as usually he is highly suspicious of people. But for some reason, Thanos really liked me and couldn't stop jumping on me, letting me fuss him and taking treats out of my hands. What is the difference between a Malakli and a Kangol? Well, with the Malakli, they're a lot bigger, they're a lot stronger, the bones are heavier. Obviously, they've got droopy lips, the reason why they're called the Malakli yeah. as well. But also, the temperaments as well, the loving. <laughs> they're a lot more aggressive, they're a lot more alert. How heavy is he? Oh, he's 83 kilos. That's huge. Huge, yeah. That's like, really, really, really heavy. Big for how slim he is as well. How tall is he? Do you know how yeah, tall he is at the I'm shoulder? I'm sure that's at the shoulder. He's 85 centimetres. And he's three years old. When you walk along the road and somebody comes towards you, what do you do? Do you... I have to cross. They think for themselves, so they won't analyse the situation. They're more like bites first, ask questions later, yeah. you know what I mean? So sometimes he'll just bite before growling? Yeah, most of the time he won't even growl. Most of the time he's silent and then attacks and just goes. Right. So he'll analyse the situation and it's all on his terms. If he deems you a threat, then he won't let you know. He'll just attack. He can be dead calm around you and then all of a sudden it just it changes can just with change. a flick of switch. Yeah. He is literally just standing here right now, just guarding us and looking around. And this is exactly what the Kangals were doing. So you can see the similarities there. Yeah. So when you walk him in a park, you keep him on a lead? Oh, 100%, yeah, keep him on a lead because he'll try and put everyone in order. All the females, he'll try and put them in order. And then any males, he'll try and eliminate them, you know what I mean? Because he'll see them as a threat. Yeah, and also like when we were filming the Kangals, everywhere you take them then becomes their property. Yeah, definitely. So this part we're in right now would then become his property. A million percent, he would patrol the whole way around, mark his scent and then that is them for the day. Are they easy to train? Are they difficult? Are they stubborn? Are they independent? Well, it goes on the situation and where you are so like if we're in the house and it's nice and calm no one's in if i've got some ham or whatever like that and, and i want to get like sip or lie down off him i can get that if i'm outside now or like if there's something going on if someone in the back of you can hear things treats will do nothing if he can see a threat and i want him to come here he, he, he won't go. It's all on his terms. It's very hard to get recalled. As a good owner that you are, then it just comes down to you to protect both him and other people yeah. by just keeping him leashed yeah, when you go out in public. Percent. The Kangle I filmed with, a dog went by and he dragged me right along the field. I can't imagine how powerful this dog would be. You must have problems holding him yeah, sometimes. Yeah, like, so, sometimes, like I say, it, it varying on the situation, Sometimes if he's just inquisitive, it can be a bit of a pull. If he wants to get somewhere, it's more of a pull. And then sometimes if it's a threat or something that, you know, he wants to get to, it can literally be like, I'm, I'm taking you away. I'm heavy, I'm 16 stone, and he can move me with, with no problem. Yeah. Very, very efficient dogs that protect flocks of sheep and cattle in the mountains from wolves. Just to go over the old story that we go over in Animal Watch over and over and over again about can these dogs kill a wolf? You get massive timber wolves, you get massive arctic wolves in the USA. These dogs aren't as big as the wolves that you get in the States. But European wolves, Arabian wolves, and all those smaller wolves that you get in more desert-like places are much smaller. Yeah. They're almost like between a coyote and a wolf size. Yeah. So a dog like this will have the power to take down a single wolf. But they use these dogs in packs. So it's always a pack of the dogs. Yeah. So, you know, if they happen to corner one wolf, then of course there's going to be trouble. Equally, you will see these dogs, unfortunately, will also get eaten by the wolves. You get a pack of wolves onto one of these dogs when they're going to yeah, eliminate the, the dog. Same, yeah. But hopefully most of the time we like to see them used as a deterrent. Well, meeting Thanos had really been an eye opener. The flock guardians, especially the Turkish ones, are serious units. You would not want to meet one of these on a dark night while walking in the Turkish countryside. Thanos was pure muscle, pure drive, and despite allowing me to interact with him, always, and I mean always, had his eyes on everyone coming and going around us. He was suspicious of everyone and really protected Cameron, and also the fields we were in. He didn't like other dogs except for the one he lived with, and would be on guard every time a stranger walked by.
I was honoured to have had Thanos accept me and even show affection to me, to the astonishment of Cameron and his wife. Thanos even allowed me into his eating space later at the house as he ate his favourite raw food. So now I had met one and he was incredible. So now I was off to meet what I'd been told was the tallest Malakli in the UK, another import from Turkey, but one where owner Dylan had instructed the breeder to leave his ears intact and uncropped. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm Annika. Hi, I'm Dylan. Who's this? Uh, this is a boo. A boo? A boo. Hiya. Hiya, boo. Hiya. How are you doing? What a soft mouth. Very soft, isn't he? He's absolutely gorgeous. And he's a, a Turkish Malakli. A Turkish Malakli, yes. And he's really tall, isn't he? Like he's very possibly, tall. Possibly, I've heard, the tallest Malakli in the UK. He is meant to be, yes. So I've heard off of a couple of people, he's meant to be the tallest. Yeah, and he's 18 months old. He's, uh, no, he's 16 months old. That's even younger. 16 months, yes. Oh, okay. He's absolutely gorgeous. Hey, come here, baby. His feet are huge. They're one of the biggest feet that I've ever seen. They're just like as big as my hands. Abu was gigantic, as tall if not taller than a Great Dane. His youth meant that his muscle hadn't come in yet but you could see how huge he would become in the next few years. Abu was highly socialised and Dylan had made it his mission to make him the most social Malakli in the UK by constantly taking him out to meet all types of dogs and people. Abu was wary and would survey everything around him, just like Thanos did, but his energy was far more relaxed and even greeted tiny dogs with grace, respect and gentleness. I must say, I was very impressed. Why a Malakli? Why did you decide to, to get one of those? Well, I wanted something that was going to be a guardian for the house, good with the children, but able to go on long walks as well. And he fit the bill really well. So you've got kids at home. How old are they? Two and three. Is he very careful around them? He is. He's very cautious. When the kids are around, he flips into guardian mode and he's very, very cautious. He looks and after calm. them really he looks well. After them very well. And then when the kids aren't around, he's back to puppy mode and bouncing about. That's really, really beautiful to hear, actually. So, so you would say these are very, very good family dogs? Very good family dogs. So when I first saw him, I just thought Scooby-Doo, actually. <laughs> I thought he looked actually quite Great Danish. A lot of um, people do think that uh, he's a Great Dane. Is it because he's quite young? Is he going to fill in? Is all that muscle and strength sort of going to come? That's exactly Do you think when where. he gets to about three, perhaps, when he gets to his prime? Yeah, he's at that gangly uh, stage now. Yeah. The gangly so, long stage. How tall is he, do you know? He is close to a metre at the shoulders. How heavy is he right now? Right now, um, he's a bit slimmer than he normally is and he's probably about 92, 93 kilograms. 92, 93. And you were saying he's quite slim because you've had a female dog in heat. I've had a female dog so in heat, So he's not being... Yeah. Wanting so not to eat, and, and yeah. anybody that knows male dogs, they'll know that that's actually true. I've heard that before. I had a female in heat, and um, my male just went mad. He didn't want to eat anything, and he just wanted to claw through the door constantly to get to the female. Yeah. So yes, I can see why that is. He doesn't know me at all, mm -hmm. and he's met me beautifully today. Yeah. He's been meeting dogs beautifully. He's been letting strangers touch him. Now, not all Malakli's are like that. No. Has this taken a lot of work? I mean, are these breeds, if you don't socialise them, quite aggressive and guarded? I think if you don't socialise these breeds well at a young age, they do become aggressive, yes. Not mainly human aggressive, more animal aggressive, I would say. He's taken lots of work, lots of lots of work. Every day is working. There's never a day off um, training-wise with him. Lots of socialisation. Lots of noisy key. environments. Yep. Busy. Meet, meet lots of dogs all the time. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. You are a great example of showing what a really, really well socialised Malakli is. If you choose to have it as a pet, you have to put the work in. Now, what does he like off the lead when you take him to a park? If you were to let him off and just let him run, does he become quite mischievous? He does. <laughs> he then becomes a very, very stubborn dog. Ah, oh, right. Very stubborn dog. He's, he's very good, um, but he's very stubborn. And the only thing that I fear of is that he's too big 
to play with the other dogs. He hurts them with his paws and his yeah, sheer size. Yeah, so really and his only weight. accidentally. It's yeah. just pure, purely because of purely his size. Accident, yes. So most of the time, you keep him on this long lead. What's he like training? Is he obedient? Training wise, he's, lie down? he's been pretty good, yes. The only thing that he's rubbish on is the recall. Does he do the real gardening thing with your garden? Does he, he make He does the that full on your... guardian thing. I have quite a big garden. He he's does. up at the fence. If anyone comes, any noises come. Yeah. Because he's being very polite now, yeah. but once he's inside your house, he changes. He's always a totally different dog. Uh, the guardian ward kicks in and he is on full time garden ward. So not the favourite for the postman, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> and how about cats, if cats come in the garden? He's he... pretty good with cats. He actually doesn't really he's mind good. them. He's good with all animals, to be honest. He's definitely curious and he's definitely looking around. So for instance, you're off your territory right now. Mm -hmm. You're walking along and somebody was a threat to you. Yeah. So say a guy was coming along, might want to rob you. Will he guard you? Will he know and he understand? He, he, he will, he's a different dog. I think he can feel the threat. I don't think too many people will come no. too close with him. And how about at night time? What's he like at night when you walk with him? As soon as the darkness hits and I take him out, he's a totally different animal. That guardian mode flicks on and he's watching everything. That's really, really interesting because of course, when they're looking after the flocks, mm -hmm. the time that when the wolves come to, to pick off the sheep is nighttime. Night time. That would be a natural thing for them to be, would be awake at night when the wolves yeah. come. You were saying that he actually quite likes water as well. He loves water. We've got a river here, so we're keeping him on a lead to make <laughs> sure he doesn't go in the river, aren't we? We are. And is he fast? He's very, very quick. He's very, very, very fast. Quick. I mean, I think it's with his legs being so long as well that he covers a lot of ground fast, yeah. but he is very quick. Do you know what the life expectancy are of um, these dogs? I've heard of dogs in the age of about 14 year old, um, 14, 15 year old, which is really good for a dog I this size. I think it's really, really good. Dylan left with Abu as it was dinner time for him and like Thanos was eating a brilliant raw food diet, so important for a developing working breed. met two very different characters Malakli, one far more guarded than the other. But one thing was certain, these dogs meant business. They always had one eye on anything and everything around us, a trait so strong in all the flock guardians I had met to date. They are with you, but not ever truly looking at you. The eye contact is not there, like in the German Shepherd breeds, who are trained to focus on their owner's commands. These dogs are independent and strong, and they know it. You have to win their affection and respect by being a strong and kind owner. You absolutely must, and I can't stress this enough, socialize this dog like crazy if you want him as a pet, as the drive to protect family, garden, and territory is the most important goal in his existence. You can temper this drive down, but give him land to guard, a flock to protect, and he will be the biggest and baddest dog in town. He is slower and clumsier than the Kangal, so some might argue not as efficient as the Kangal, but his strength and muscle power will make up for it once these big boys arrive on the scene. Just remember, both wolves and flock guardians die out in rural areas. There is never one better than the other, as every situation is unique. Sometimes the wolves win and kill the dogs, and sometimes a pack of dogs manage to corner a single wolf and kill him. To be honest, these dogs are more of a deterrent rather than killers. Wolves usually leave when they know that they're not getting an easy meal, and that is the better outcome, as it's never a happy ending when a farmer loses his beloved dogs, or the poor wolves are exterminated simply for doing what is natural to them. If the USA had more flock guardians, then perhaps the sick wolf hunts would end. So all you lazy farmers out there, man up and start to work your flocks like the rural Europeans have for centuries and let the wolves return to areas where they used to roam all across the world. And if you enjoyed this episode, then make sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel by clicking the button in the bottom hand corner. And be sure to tune in every single week where we'll be bringing you more amazing episodes <laughs> on dogs, wolves, animal rescue and conservation. Bye for now. Hey Thanos, 
you my friend? Are you my friend now? Po, po, goodbye. <laughs>